Well, welcome those of you joining us online, those of you uh, here in person, it's great to be with you. Uh, leave the support worker, Timmy, it's our last day, and uh, she'll miss out on me every week now. Maybe she'll just come back because we're so great. <laughs> it's been lovely having you with us uh, over the last few weeks, and no doubt a new person will appear to offer support, but thank you for all the work you do, and thank you for that. It's been great having you with us. Look forward to seeing you soon. Pop into the Glen Creek Cafe, eh, hey, Kim? Yes. Yeah, she's down there. And so I hear on good authority, good coffee, good food. Uh, it's good to open God's word. It's great to be able to share with you. And we're going to just pause for a moment of prayer. And then we'll consider the fear of God, the wonder of God, the awe of God, the grace of God, and the mercy of God. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you that you indeed hear our prayers and hear our thoughts. Be our hope and be our salvation. Thank you, Lord, that we're free together here in this place to honour you, to worship you, to sing, to break bread and to fellowship together. Lord, take these words and speak to our hearts and lives this day. Let's grasp the fear and wonder of your name. Thank you, God, that you lead and guide. Thank you, God, that we can be your hands and feet. Thank you, God, that we can again celebrate a great year that we've had. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't miss the fear of God, the wonder of God, the wow, God. Mighty and eternal. Proverbs chapter 9 encourages us, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. If you fear me, God says, you don't have to fear anything else. Fear God doesn't sound very interesting or exciting, does it? Not the kind of God that maybe wants to have a relationship with you. But when we talk about the fear of God, it's about the awe, the wonder, the mercy, the grace that God has made a way for you and I through Jesus Christ. So we could know him and be known by him and be wise. When we live in a place of fear, worry, anxiety, uncertainty, we must come and rediscover today the awe and wonder of our God, God Almighty, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Shortly, we're going to have a little look into the book of Samuel and through some chapters there, but we'll get to that shortly. The people of God were fighting the Philistines. It's not going well for God's people. The Philistines killed several thousand of God's people. So a report goes back about what has happened. And they report back, honestly, we were beaten. It did not go well for us. Lots of people have lost their lives in the battle. And we needed to address this. We need to go down to Shiloh and get the Ark of the Covenant and bring it back and take it down to the battle so the presence of God is with us. So they go and talk to the priest, Eli. We want to take God's presence into the battle because we're being killed and we need to win, amen. And we need to take God's presence with us into the middle of this fight. Eli had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, and 
These two men were terrible leaders, if you know any of your Bible knowledge, in the house of God. So the ark arrives, and we're in chapter 4 of First Samuel. I'm on the screen for you. When the ark of the Lord's covenant came into the camp, all the Israelites raised such a great shout that the ground shook. A bit like an NRL AFL grand final. Hearing the uproar, the Philistines asked, What's all this shouting in the Hebrew camp? When they'd learned that the ark of the Lord had come into the camp, the Philistines were afraid. A God has come into the camp, they said. Oh no, nothing like this has ever happened before. They might have had more amazement and wonder about God than the people of God did. So here we go. Let's take God with us into the battle. We're sure to win. Things are going to go well. Chapter 4, verse 10 and 11 of First Samuel. So the Philistines fought and the Israelites were defeated. And every scaredy cat, I know, every man fled to his tent. The slaughter was very Great. Israel lost 30,000 foot soldiers. Can you imagine the camp you need for 30,000 foot soldiers? The ark of God was captured, and Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phineas, died. Well, that was great, wasn't it? This is an exciting message. So a man sets off, he heads down to Shiloh, he finds Eli, who's quite old, he's losing his sight, he's sitting by beside the roadside. He's looking down this road where they've taken the ark in the presence of God, and he's about to find out that his two sons have died. It's verse 13 of Samuel 4. When he arrived, there was Eli sitting on his chair by the side of the road, watching because his heart feared for the ark of God. When the man entered the town and told what had happened, the whole town set up a cry. His heart feared for the ark of God. Eli still had a sense and a wonder and an awe of the Almighty. The news was too great, too shocking. So many dead. The ark has lost. His, his sons had died. Verse 18, when he mentioned the ark of God, Eli fell backwards off his chair by the side of the gate. His neck was broken and he died. Well, he was an old man and he was heavy. I love that bit. I love God's word. I laughed about that, but sorry. It led the people of Israel for 40 years. Getting a bit of a death toll here. Getting a bit of a list. But sadly, Phineas's wife, she was pregnant and she goes into labor. After hearing all this bad news, she dies after childbirth. And she names her son Ichabod. In verse 21, she named the boy Ichabod, saying, The glory of God has departed from Israel because they've captured the ark. The presence, the glory, the wonder of God is gone, and I'm going to call my son. The glory of God has gone. There's now a child walking around named Ichabod, because God's glory has gone. It has left his people. The awe, the wonder, the fear, the glory of God has gone. Don't lose your perspective of God Almighty. We thought we'd win. We had the ark. We saw it go down the road. 
They got it all wrong. And they tried to use God's glory to make other men fear them. We've got the secret weapon. So what happens? We continue on this story. The Philistines have a party and they celebrate. They've got the Ark of God, the Ark of the Covenant. They've basically, in their mind, captured God. The Israelites' so-called special weapon, so they take the Ark on a victory tour through all these different towns and regions and places. But guess what happens? They break out in plagues because, friends, God is not happy. God is not pleased at all. Tumors start to appear on their bodies, and so they think this isn't good. So they put the ark back up on a card and put some gifts with it, and they send the ark back. They fear God, and they send it back down the road to God's people. And there's some villagers out in the fields, some people from Beth Shemesh, Samuel 6, 19 to 20. They see this ark wandering down. They see a cart and the ark of God. So wouldn't you go over and have a look? No one would. Okay, I would. So they head on over. But God struck down some of the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh, putting 70 of them to death because they looked into the ark of the Lord. The people mourned because of the heavy blow the Lord had dealt them. And the people of Beth Shemesh asked, who can stand in the presence of the Lord, this holy God? Verse 21, then they sent messengers to the people of Kareth Shireen, saying, the Philistines have returned the ark of the Lord. Come down and take it to your town, because that's a good idea. Do you not know how many people have died and lost their life? Eli, Eli's sons, daughter-in-law, 70 more just a few minutes ago, thousands dead. For Samuel 7, the ark remained in Kareth during a long time, 20 years in all. But there's hope. Then all the people of Israel turned back to God, our God of wonders, our God of mercy, our God of awe and grace, who said, fear me and gain wisdom. And Samuel steps in and he says, get rid of all your idols. Get rid of all the things that you've been doing and worshipping foreign gods. And if you're true, if your heart is pure, return to the Lord. Turn your heart again to him. Turn faithfully all of your heart to the Lord. Where do we stand today here in this place? The some of us need to return to the Lord with all our heart and all our mind and all our strength. What needs to die in our life so God can raise it to life. Don't be a God plus Christian and tack things on to your life. Twenty years go past. And David is on the scene. And we're taking the ark once again to Jerusalem. And he's trying to make sense of all that has happened in the history. A guy dies from just keeping the, the cart and the, and, and the ark from, from tipping over. In 2 Samuel 6, 
6 and 8. And David's perplexed and David is confused. And David is asking a question that we need to ask. When they came to the threshing floor of Anok, 2 Samuel 6, 6 and 8, Uzziah reached out and took hold of the ark of God because the oxen stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzziah because of his irreverent act. Therefore, God struck him down and he died there beside the ark of God. Then David was angry because of the Lord's wrath had broken it down, out against Uzziah. And to this day, the place is called Persia Uzziah. Samuel, 2 Samuel 6, 9, David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, how can the ark of the Lord ever come to me? How can I ever be close to God's presence? How can we ever have God come and dwell with us? This is gospel recognition. How can God and his glory ever come to someone like me, like you? How can I know God? Holy, majestic, how can I ever be close to this powerful and almighty God? For he, friends, has made a way through Jesus Christ. Today we come to worship. Today we come to join together as his church here in this place. Have a holy awe and wonder of our almighty God, who at times seems unattainable and at times does things that are perplexing and other times welcomes children and the widow and the orphan and says, come, come to me if you are hungry. Come to me if you are broken. Come to me if you are hurt and find healing and restoration for your soul. Come to me. He calls you and I to be holy and blameless and to get rid of all those things that will distract and all those things we tack on to our faith. The problem wasn't with the ark. The problem was with the heart. Have a healthy fear of God. Have a reverence. Have an awe of him. Don't get too comfortable with God. What did God show us in the beginning? What have we forgotten and changed to, to suit ourselves? Friends, the ark was supposed to be carried on poles that went through golden rings on the side, not on carts. Don't get trapped with a good idea that's not from God. Don't get distracted by other people's flashy carts. For God gives you and I the best way. The best way. Carry God's presence with you every day. Give thanks for Jesus for all that he's done. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Worship him, honour him, give him thanks and praise. Psalm 66, as we finish this morning. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. And if you picked up our annual report, you can see how awesome are his deeds. Through faithful hands and faithful people. How awesome are your deeds. 
So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praises to you. They sing the praises of your name. Amen. Father God, I thank you that we can sing the praises of your name. Lord, examine our hearts. Lord, call us back to you. Keep us on that path. Eyes fixed ahead, serving you, honouring you, giving thanks to you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.